are welcome to Next Telly. Thank you so much for stopping by. Today we are going to be reading The Tears of the Hungry Nigerian Entrepreneur by Sheung Akisomi. This book is... Okay, before I start, let me talk about the author. Um, Sheung Akisomi is somebody that is doing something for his niche or his department or his category in business. Something that I think a lot of top um, people should be trying to do. He's a photographer, media communicator, whatever English you want to call it, but his job is to move still media from one place to the other, okay? We call it photography, right? There are different names for it. Okay, so that's what he does. However, some years back, about almost 10 years now, seven years ago, he started this thing called NIFEC, which is like a conference where we have, um, where he has got, he gathers a lot of internationally renowned photographers and media communication artists, do you understand, to come to Nigeria, have um, um, classes with people, you know, uh, photographers, they talk about things like pricing, quality, making it work in this economy, making it work in, you know, whatever. So it's like, this is something that is like a... It's like a, uh, how do I put it? It's like, it's a dream for him. He does it without batting an eyelid. For him, it's a passion. That's the word. It's a passion for him. It's something very, very important. And that just makes him amazing. Like for that, for that alone, for that reason alone, I have mad respect for the guy. Like, wow. <laughs> and he's been doing this and he's just been carrying on doing it over and over again. As a matter of fact, I, I'll see if I can find the video. I found a video of him recently. I, I happened to be at um, Creative African Creative Market and he was there hosting a photo, a photo, a, a short photo class. You know for one day and there was this long line of uh, aspiring photographers just standing around there just trying to get in somehow i'm like yo sir i am so i'm so impressed and i'm so proud of this man so back to this um the first time i met this person i actually happened to know him the first time i met this man was um doing um i don't know if anybody knows of daystar scale acquisition program it's been it's existed for about i think 15 years or so he was teaching photography there and i just remember thinking to myself as i, I think i watched him you now working with students and i'm like okay this man is really into what he's doing like he's not just blabbering on or inspiring to aspire and expire you know that kind of thing no he was he was really getting the the job done and he's worked extra hard to get as many photographers as possible to be in like you know more um common spaces because i think that most of the business people that we know like the fashion designers the who else makeup people you know most times you see everybody just trying to do their own thing the fashion designer one because i mean that's i mean that place a lot of us are just trying to do our own thing and we're trying to hoard whatever it is we think we know do you understand so we're not in a hurry to gather together and share information and share and share growth you know so it's like as a fashion designer if you're a fashion designer you're watching this channel now i'll tell you that for now in nigeria what you can do to grow your business is to go and do business leave fashion people alone because they're not going to help you um i remember a friend of mine um had a mentor she had a mentor assigned to her through um faith foundation if you know faith foundation please go um faith foundation and the mentor was hoarding information from her do you understand? Because I think it was a training school she was trying to run. The lady was already running a training school, so she wouldn't let her see the curriculum. She wouldn't let her know the, the fees. But like, what's the point of mentorship if you have to hide? I'm not trying to explain how this is, so you can understand where this person, why this person is amazing, if you don't already. Tears of a Hungry Nigerian Entrepreneur. It happens to be a, a collection of articles that he had written over years. This book is huge. I've never finished it. It's a huge book. But there are a few stories in here, or there are a few articles here where he writes about different things. That affects you as a as a as a business person in Nigeria, as a photographer in general, as a photographer in Nigeria, and then also in Lagos, like the factors affect this. So he talks about him being a father, him being a husband, being him him being a a mentor, him being a mentee, you know, him him being um, working with business people, things that he likes, being an entrepreneur, the wahala that he can come with, you know, the the search of perfection, this uh, uh, what what matters more, my idea or their idea. That's the idea being the clients. Dealing with clients, yeah, that's a major this thing as a, as a business person here in Nigeria. So, it's like if you're someone that does business and you care at all to have any idea about what it's like or you're planning to get into business and all that, and you're trying to figure out what it could be like to be a business person in Nigeria, this book is the book you want to read. Let me see if I can find, I can remember two particular ones that I really liked. One, that one was, I think, well, according to, from what I hear, it's not, um, it's not, um, um, it wasn't a real story, but it was a painted scenario. But, um a couple 
um, or rather a groom sent money to him I think seven thousand dollars that's about how much for his highest package so the person had sent like forty forty thousand already and it was remaining thirty uh, three thousand I might be missing all the numbers but you know it was remaining three thousand and sent came from abroad I think US the man called they spoke sent the four thousand he still arranging things for the shoots a week before the shoot when they were going to do pre-wedding shoots the the groom comes in and gives him the remaining three thousand and then shows him who his bride is and his bride is a guy and he was like as a photographer what would you do and you know it got me thinking and i can't help but ask whatever business you're in like if you're a baker if you're someone that makes amazing cakes and you have got some money to start doing work for a couple in nigeria within nigeria and they've paid you they paid you the full package and you, you look forward to this exciting job and then when they come to give you a balance you find out that you're actually paying for a same sex couple what would you do as a nigerian now if you're not nigerian i know you're going to you're going to think that you know nigerians are being extra we're very homophobic blah 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 that is debatable but understand the major issue in nigeria the major issue is that it's considered a punishable offense and apparently in the law it's not just the couple that can get into trouble. If a couple is getting married and you, as a vendor or as a dear stand, um, willingly associate yourself to this couple, you can also be punished. So what would you do? You know, let's just think about that. Okay, so that's, um, that's one story. The second one was one about the daughter and I think Ka. He had gone to pick the daughter from school and he had to take a bike and the girl could not understand why. Why they have to take a <laughs> why they have to take a bike, you know, a while back. Um, I think it's as a as an entrepreneur here in Nigeria, the level of um, inconsistencies, like the weather. Do you understand? One minute you have a lot of money, and three months down the line you've not gotten one job. Nothing is wrong. You just haven't gotten any job. Um, especially when, especially in the beginning, because as you get um, as you get further along the line, you start learning how to create that form of consistency, whether it's with your finances and, or with your clients and all that. But in the beginning, you know, one minute is like, ah, one year, money, 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 every, every two, two weeks, money be coming in. And then next thing, um, for the next one year, nothing happens. And it's not like nothing, ha there's not, nobody's against you. It's just, so like, what do you do? So it was that kind of thing that had happened to him that period of time. So it's like, I, I just thought to myself like, wow, I, I feel like, to an extent, I've had a conversation similar to this with my kid, so it was easy to resonate with. But I, I, th I believe that if you're a business person, or if, uh, someone that is struggling in Nigeria, you would find um, solace in his stories, in his ideas, in his suggestions. Um, there's a lot to learn. There's a lot to hope for, and there's a lot to aspire to in this book. So that's pretty much it with this book. Short uh, review, a lot. Thank you for coming by. Uh, if this is your first time, please like, subscribe, and share to all your friends. They leave a comment below, okay, concerning anything you want to talk about. If it's the way the video is done, or you don't that you don't like the title of this book, I'm not crazy about this title, I have to say. But um, the title of the book or anything, you know, just leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. And then thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.